right, folks. Let's do this. All right, let's go. Let's play that first section. All right, so, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing going, folks. Uh, this sustain pedal keeps sliding. I know y'all know about that. Here we go. Right? And then. Or. Let me, let me hear that again. Okay, so let's that that first part there. How how is that different? How is he voicing that differently? He's got some really cool voicings here. Um, most people would do this, right? Um, but he's going da da. When he hits this D flat again, he's testing a dominant chord here. And you know, a dominant chord is like this, but he's voicing it like this. Okay, this is a dominant chord, it's just this, the C sharp is on top instead of on the bottom. That's a melody, and you don't want to keep that melody on top if you can, right? So. But he's not using this voicing here. This is the voicing that we, we like to use here, this 13th, but he's going like this. Right? This is the chord, he has that C in there. Nice strong C, listen for that. C. All right, so here's the voicing here. So you have the F sharp, E flat, F, B flat, C, and an F. Let's keep on going. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So, you know. So you can have this A, you can have this F minor 9 here, but you can also have a diminished scale there by changing, all you gotta do to use a diminished voicing um, is to change these E's to E flats. Right, another thing you could do, you could also on that section, you know, right? So that would be using 1305 voicings, right? Right, and then and then he goes um so he has this kind of voice in the little move there something like that or right so this is the voice in here a c sharp e sharp d sharp i mean f and a flat let me hear the next part there. Um, Alright, so that there, this is, uh, see, the neat thing about these voicings, especially on this part of the song, you've got this. You got really what's major voicings, right? But they're going down a whole step. Um, well, except for the first one. This is a half step. This first one's a half step. Right? But he doesn't do that. He goes... But then he goes... Right? Which is a B flat. Probably a flat 9, flat 5. Right? And then... Um, and then... Okay, that's the voicing he uses. I, I really like... The neat thing about that voicing is you can use these major, major voicing going down whole steps in a lot of context. Um, because uh, let me, in, in other words, not to play it exactly like him, but um, right, and then now I'm gonna do all major chords, right? So see how that the Corey Corey Henry actually, I think that he does that too in uh, one of his songs. I think it's at the end of uh. That song he's playing in the organ with um, 
all those people around him. <laughs> well, like, you're like, that's every song. <laughs> but uh, he does uh, uh, at the end of He's Able. <laughs> yeah, he does it at the He does it. Uh, no, he goes on. Something like that. And then. Something like that, right? So, again, just kind of, you know, having those whole step movements. Um, right? And then... Right, so just to, those movements are so and they're unexpected. That's what makes them so unique. They are. It's not something that you are actually thinking to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what's so cool about these voices. Because going back to promise, you know. Right. Right. So it's, mostly you would expect. So, what's that? I'll be with you. Check that out. I'll, so get a B flat minor chord. B, then you have this E flat, this e, e flat seven, sharp 11. And then you have this A dominant here, sharp nine, sharp five. You wanna trill up to that C, go down a half step to the B flat. When you go down that half step, at the same time you hit that B, hit an E flat at the bottom. Um, I like I like doing that. So let's do this, and then yeah, because what we want to do is is what's what's happening is I'll be with. And these are some crazy chords now, okay? So if you're gonna attempt this song, you need to spend some time with it. Um, I'll be with, here's that A7, sharp nine, sharp five. Take that down to a B, take that down to an E flat in the bottom, and then go, um, do a diminished seven voicing, you can make it drop two. Then you have this E flat nine, flat five here, or sharp nine, sharp five, and then ways. This nice voicing that he likes to use, the sharp nine, sharp five. Look, look, the sharp nine, sharp five is something, because you may have noticed when he went. Right? You may have noticed it there. So now he's using it again. Right? So, so where does that chord come from? It's actually a very popular chord. Um, so I'm going to ask the question. Right? So that's where you normally hear it. So you see that voicing? That's a very, very, very popular voicing in gospel, but what he's doing and to to make it different, not even adding any notes. Take that A flat and just move it down an octave. And then, wow, it sounds so good, right? Because because now the reason these close voicings sound so well is when when you know what you're playing and the notes are closer together, um, it just it the dissonance the dissonance sounds really great because you've got the a flat instead of being a whole major seventh away right you have it right next to it but it's still the same tone so it creates this nice sound right and so that's what's going on so where was he um whew, see see how that sounds Nice, nice, nice. Um. Right. Right. He 
you hear that C there? So F sharp, E flat, B, C, F. C. F sharp minor 11 there. He's going to uh, actually be down here. Instead of just, instead of this chord, he's throwing the C in there. This is just a regular D flat major chord with an A flat at the bottom, but he throws the C. Again, a lot of these voicings, especially if you know where to put them, those half step movements sound really nice within chords when you can find them, right? And I already told you, you can use, right? But that's the same as this. You use just different ways to voice that. Yes, see. Right, so. <clears throat> Okay, so that that what is that? That's um that movement is interesting because you have a, a on the bass you have an F. How do I how do I how do I play it, but not explain what I'm doing? You guys want explanations? You don't want to see me playing this thing. Okay, so yeah, so the bass is going to be F A D G. <laughs> I could, I could, you know, it's funny because I could, I could play the stuff that I'm hearing, right? But, um, you know, <laughs> to, to ask me to explain means I have to switch my brain to, to like trying to teach it. Like that's a whole other y'all, y'all people who do teaching, y'all understand, man. This this thing is crazy. So what you got is this. So, so you have that chord I told you about before, which is a sharp nine, sharp five. Okay. Now this next chord is really interesting here. He 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 likes that A sharp nine, sharp five sound, right? Right, which is that. But here, he has that A flat in there because that's the melody. So, right, and then. And this is another sharp, sharp nine, sharp five sound. And then he goes to the G minor eleven. All right, so you have. Whew, insane chords. Okay, insane. So that chord right there is going to be a flat nine, flat five, which is. Um, an easy way to remember sharp nine and sharp five is the um, go up a half, go up five, go a half step up, and play a triad. Play that triad with the right hand and play a dominant chord with the left hand. Those will always be sharp nine, sharp fives. Okay, you do the same thing with F. So F sharp nine, sharp five would be F go up five. Half step, major, major triad, the notes in the dominant chord. So then you have this voicing. Okay, flat nine, flat five, go up five. Instead of going uh, up a sharp, you go down. Okay, so now this is G flat major. Okay, but you play that G flat major with the C. That's where we started from, the C dominant. And the thing is, the C. The thing is, um, ear, ears. This is interesting because when I talk about ear, it's more than just hearing chords. It's being able to, you know, because you hear I try to weave in and out of different songs and whatnot. Um, and that's because I have to not only recognize what I'm hearing, but hearing their placements, hearing that whole movement I was talking to you about flat nine, flat five, being able to hear that kind of a voicing in different contexts and in different keys, right? Um, this is where 
you kind of start saying, hmm, I think I could use this here, right? A sharp nine, sharp five, flat nine, flat five, those are all types of dominant chords. So you can use them in place of dominant chords. <laughs> 